Welcome to Bubbleology. This is a really fun little unit um, using soap bubbles to demonstrate a whole bunch of different scientific principles. Uh, I wish I could say that I am responsible for developing this program, but I got it probably 20 years ago from the University of California at Berkeley, the Lawrence Hall of Science. And I've used this over the years, over a huge span of ages, all the way from kindergartners through the elementary years, most commonly in my middle school classes, and I've even used it successfully at the graduate level. So this is gonna be fun and interesting. If you can, you can do this activity alone, but it's a lot more fun if you have several other people with you. And since during the coronavirus times, we're stuck at home, you can also maybe FaceTime someone and do this activity simultaneously with them. There's a little bit of a competitive part to it too, and it's kind of fun to show other people what you're able to do. I'm gonna start by giving you the supplies that we need for this activity. Uh, they're very simple, water, I put it in a container here, but most of you can just walk over to your kitchen sink and get the water you need. You need some dishwashing detergent. The best brand, and I'm not trying to push this for any reason, is Dawn. And if you can get the blue, that was the one that was recommended to me, but I've had a lot of success with the green. You need a measuring cup, a measuring tablespoon, a plastic flexible straw. These are a little harder to get now. You can use paper, but this one will give you a lot more success. A ruler and a paper towel. So if you want to pause the video for a moment and gather these materials, as soon as you have them gathered, I'll show you how to do the mixing of the ingredients. Here we go. First of all, we're going to take the measuring cup and set it right here in front of yourself. And then I'm going to measure one tablespoon of the dishwashing detergent. You can use any kind you want, any product, but I think the ones that are more clear probably work better. So I have my tablespoon here. And since I'm going to use it for mixing, I'll just drop the whole tablespoon inside the container. Now, after you've done that, I'm going to take and add water to this one cup with the soap in it. And I'm going to take it all the way up to one cup. Notice I'm pouring very slowly. You do not want to generate a lot of bubbles in this. And then when I mix it, I'm going to mix very slowly. So I'm mixing it around and I'm trying to keep the suds down, but I do want to spread that soap all the way through this one cup of water. So during this activity, we're going to need to have this handy. And if there are several of you in the group, you can go ahead and take some of this quantity and put it into smaller containers, little cups, little dishes. Um, if you can, stay away from paper, all paper cups, because they tend to melt through before the activity is over. So this is what we need. We have our soap mix mixture here. I have my straw and my ruler and my paper towel. Now I'm going to give you some uh, more specific rules and ideas about this activity. So here we go with a few simple rules. If you follow these rules, you're going to have a lot more fun. This activity will be successful and you won't make a big mess and cause your parents a problem. First of all, during this activity, we will have no airborne bubbles. So if there are bubbles floating around during this activity, it's not appropriate for this activity. Secondly, we don't want anyone taking their straw and putting it down in the soap solution and blowing air into the soap solution and making what I call waterfalls. That makes a big mess. It's not part of this activity. 
And finally, when you're doing this activity, please follow my instructions. I will give you challenges all the way through this activity and I would like you to stop the video and follow my challenge and then turn the video back on and see um, if you've had some success with what I've asked you to do. Okay. Now, the first thing we're going to do to set this up, you have to learn how to create the bubbles that you will need to do the experiments we're going to be doing. So here is the technique. You take your straw, you bend it, and you're going to be blowing through this portion of the straw that is the short end, okay? Not this way. You'll have a little bit more trouble. Always blow through this end. If you get mixed up, you're going to be putting your lips and tasting a lot of soap. The next thing you have to remember when you're doing this activity is when you blow in the straw, you're going to have to blow the lightest puff of air that you've ever blown, okay? If you think you're blowing up a beach ball, it's going to pop every bubble. It will not work. So here's our first task. Can you blow a bubble? I'm going to ask you to take the soap solution and in front of you, I would like you to pour a puddle about as big around as an egg. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little bit, drip, drip, that's enough. Now, once that hits the, the tabletop, and you can't really do this on a wooden tabletop, you're going to need to do it on something like Formica, in this case it's like quartz. And then I'm going to take my straw, and it's kind of like a windshield wiper, and I'm going to spread this fluid around a little bit, and I'm going to wet the surface. When I do that, the bubble will not pop if it stays on a wet surface. Then I'm going to have my solution near me. Notice the solution is away from me so I don't knock it over as I'm manipulating things. I'm going to dip the straw into the solution, then touch it down to the tabletop and blow very gently. Now you notice when I pulled the straw out it popped. I can go ahead and do that again. And that's pretty much what I want you to be able to do to do the activity. So why don't you pause right now the video and practice and don't turn the video back on until you're able to blow a bubble on command. Okay? Now that you've restarted the video, I want to show you how to get rid of bubbles when we need to get rid of them. Make sure you have a dry finger and just touch it and it pops it. If your finger is wet, it won't work as well. Now, the next thing I'd like you to try is I would like you to take and blow a bubble and then I would like you to do the following. Blow the bubble first. I'll do that now. About the size of a grapefruit. Now notice this, take your straw, dip it into the solution, and you should, if you go very slowly, be able to punch through the bubble without popping it. I want you to pause the video and practice until you can dip your straw and poke it through the bubble, and you can even continue inflating it. Okay, so would you go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do that on command. Just poke the straw right through. Okay, here's challenge number one. And remember, each of these challenges is building your skill set up to the point where you can do some trickier things later in the activity. The first challenge is this. Would you take your straw and make a bubble about the size of a golf ball? And then, would you add two bubbles to the top of the golf ball and make what I call a Mickey Mouse? So that's my first challenge. Were you able to do it? Here is what it should look like. Okay, what I'm going to ask you to do now is to take a dry finger, and if that Mickey Mouse is still there, pop the ears and the head, and I want you to make another bubble about the size of a golf ball. And then when you have that, 
would you put five bubbles around that golf ball about the same size? Now here's your challenge question for this daisy that you've made. What is the shape of the center bubble? Notice if you have surrounded it with bubbles, it has five sides to it. Can you name that five-sided figure in geometry? If you have to look it up, go ahead. You can look on Google. And the answer we're looking for is a pentagon. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pop the bubbles. Would you now make another daisy and make it with six petals? So a center bubble, just a small one, and then six petals. Now that you have a six petaled daisy, another challenge for you, this is challenge number three, what is the name of that interior bubble's shape? It has six sides. What do we name it in geometry? And we're looking at a hexagon. Okay, we're going to go a little bit further with this. I'm going to pop the bubbles. And I would like you to make, you can see where we're progressing. Would you make a bubble? I'm going to jump over seven because it's an odd number and it's a little harder. But would you make a bubble? You might be better off making that center bubble smaller, about the size of a quarter, and then put eight petals around it. Now I want you to guess the shape of that interior bubble, the one with eight petals. What you're looking at is an octagon. Good job. Good job. Now if you want to make, I'm going to pop these bubbles, if you want to make a daisy with more than eight, a simple term we can use is that center bubble shape will be a polygon. Poly means many sided. Okay? So that's a little bit about shapes and how we can demonstrate them with bubbles. Are you ready for challenge number three? Just to, to have a look at it, I want you to make two bubbles about the size of an orange and have them touching each other. Now, when you look at these bubbles, I want you to observe the wall that is pressing together at the center. And I want you to notice that. Is that wall, there's a word for the wall, it goes straight up and down. What is that word that we use for something that is straight up and down? I'll give you a hint. It starts with a V. If you're thinking of vertical, you're correct. That's a perfect vertical wall between the two bubbles. Now go ahead and pop those bubbles. And we're ready for challenge number four. Maybe I should describe it before you try it. I want you to make a bubble about the size of a large orange. And then after you're doing that, would you try to make a bubble tunnel? And what I mean by that is as you're blowing into your large bubble, lift your straw off of the tabletop, continue blowing, and then very gently pull the straw out of the bubble while you're still blowing and if you're really lucky and you practice, you will see a tunnel of bubbles pumping air into your bubble. It'll only be about an inch long, but it's kind of fun to try that. Let's go ahead. Actually, right here, I'm kind of failing. I keep pulling it out and another bubble pops and rolls down. So I wasn't successful in that. But if you can do that, it's a lot of fun to try. Okay, we're going to do another activity here. And... This one here, we're going to take and we're going to blow a large bubble. And this one I just love because it's beautiful if you can do it. Um, I'm going to take my straw and I'm going to spread the fluid around a little bit. And after I've spread it around, 
I'm going to make a large bubble, but not too big. I'm going to make it about the size of a grapefruit. Go ahead and do that, and do it quickly. After you've done that, dip into the fluid and push through that bubble and make a tiny bubble in the center of that bubble. And if you can, dip into the fluid and punch through both bubbles and put a bubble inside of a bubble inside of a bubble. I just made a triple. Now, if you're able to do that, leave your seat and get down at table level and look across what you've just made. Isn't that the most beautiful thing? A bubble inside of a bubble inside of a bubble. Now, I'm going to challenge you to do this just for fun. I've had some of my students over the year make triples. Some have made quadruples, a bubble inside of a bubble inside of a bubble inside of a bubble. And very often, not very often, kids have made quintuples, five bubbles. Now, you'll notice what is frustrating. If one of your bubbles inside touches another bubble, they just stick together like a, a boysenberry. We don't want that. We want a bubble inside of a bubble inside of a bubble not touching itself, okay? So see if you can do that just for fun. Show what you've done to your friends. If you want, get out a camera and take a picture of that. That's a keeper. Um, and when you're done with that, we're going to go to our next challenge. I think this is challenge number four. Here's challenge number five. Now, I've done this for years and I've had students uh, kind of go crazy on this one because uh, everybody uh, just loves to be able to succeed at a challenge. And I start by saying, what I'm asking you to do is impossible to do. And when you say the word impossible to some people, it's like, oh yeah, watch me. But here's what I'd like you to try to do. And you can't do it, but you can try. Make a bubble about the size of a grapefruit again. Now that would be a single bubble. After you've done that, I want you to make a bubble on top of this bubble and if it can balance there for 10 seconds, I'll give you $100. You'll notice a strange thing happens, not so strange really, is the bubble, as soon as you pull the straw out, it just slides down. And you try it again and it slides down. Of course you could build up hundreds of bubbles and you could support it on top, but I'm talking about can you set a bubble on top of this bubble, pull your straw out and have it sit there for 10 seconds. And the reason that is impossible to do is because you're putting probably the slipperiest thing in the world on top of something else that is slippery and there is no friction and it's just going to slide one way or another. Now the next thing I'm going to have you do is this is another challenge. I think this is challenge number six. On challenge number six, this is a little experiment. If you want to put a timer up or look at a watch or you can just count or you can just observe, I want you to ask this question of yourself. Do you think a bubble lasts longer before it pops if it's a big bubble, if it's a medium bubble, or a small bubble. Right now, make a hypothesis. Now, that's a scientific guess. Do you think it's going to be the bigger bubble, the medium, or the small one? And if you make a good hypothesis, you should answer the question, why? You might say, I think it's going to be the big bubble because it's stronger than the little ones. Or you could say, I think it's going to be the little ones because one time I was taking a bubble bath and I saw that little bubbles lasted a long time. But come up with a hypothesis. Now, I would like you to go ahead and try that. Make your three bubbles, one about the size of an orange, a ping pong ball, and a marble. And then watch them and see which one lasts the longest. There's my three bubbles, and I'm going to start timing them. 
Okay, here's your next challenge. This is challenge number six, I believe. And um, I'd like you to make a couple of bubbles. And you can make smaller ones. You, it'd probably be easier if you made a really big one. And after you've made that bubble, I want you to watch it. And if you're very, very observant, you'll be able to see something that kind of predicts, tells you when a bubble's going to pop. Now you have to watch them carefully. I'm looking at these bubbles and uh, they're real pretty. I have light shining on them and stuff, but there's a giveaway. Now I should tell you, this is a question for brainiacs only. In a class of 30 students, I might have had one student who found this out. But there is a way, if you're observing your bubbles and you watch them pop naturally, they tell you something before they pop. Pause for a moment and do a study of this and turn the video on and I'll give you the answer. Well, the answer is this. If you're watching the bubble very closely, when light reflects on the bubble, you'll see beautiful colors of the rainbow. But then, right before the bubble pops, those rainbow colors disappear, and what happens is you begin to see kind of silvery spots, and as those silvery spots begin to grow on the top of the bubble, pop, it's gone. Now why does that happen? If you want, you can pause the camera and discuss it among yourselves. And when you turn it back on, I'll tell you why that happens. The reason why the colors disappear is because when the soap fluid is thick, there is a thickness of the fluid that bends the light and reflects it and causes it to, just like a prism, to break the light and scatter it into a spectrum of colors. But, as the gravity pulls the soap down from the top of the bubble, the top layer up here at the tippy top of the bubble gets thinner and thinner and thinner. And pretty soon it's so thin that it can't scatter the light like a prism. All the colors disappear and you begin to see a real strange spider web of silver and almost black on the top and then pop it goes. Are you ready for another challenge? Okay. This one's kind of interesting. When you get the bubble, make it pretty big, about the size of a grapefruit. Now that I have a nice size bubble, I'm going to ask you to take a ruler and measure it. I'm just measuring it with centimeters. And my bubble right now is seven centimeters high. And then I would like you to pop the bubble and measure the footprint. You'll see a circle of little bubbles on the table measure across that footprint. And I'm measuring here, my footprint is oh, 13 and a half, almost 14. So I'm going to write those numbers down. My bubble was seven centimeters high and it was 14 across. Now, do that again. Here again for you brainiacs, you notice you get a height and then the footprint is a number that corresponds to the height. Can you tell me how that correspondence works? What is the comparison between the height and the footprint? If you need to pause for a moment and think about that and then turn on the camera, I'll give you the answer. Now the answer is, since this bubble is a perfect sphere or half sphere, we're getting a height that is one half of the footprint Okay, you guys, here's some geometry. What is the name of the height of the bubble? What part of a circle is the name of the height of that bubble? 
if you're saying the word radius, you're correct. And the footprint, if you measure across, what part of a bubble or a circle is that? That would be the diameter. And the diameter of a perfect sphere is always double the radius. Okay? So we got a little geometry in there. Um, now, now that we've measured that, we're going to try something else. And this is, this is just kind of for fun. Um, to see who can make the largest bubble. Now, when you do this, you're not going to be able to measure the bubble when it's at its highest part. But what you can do is after it pops, pull out your ruler and measure that bubble at its largest point. Let's see you beat that. Okay, it popped finally. And if I were going in inches, that's almost one foot in centimeters. I'm getting 29 centimeters. Um, so there's a little challenge for you. Now, those are some fun things that we just did with bubbles. Challenge for you. Now, those are some fun things that we just did with bubbles. We got the idea of um, a pentagon, an octagon, a polygon, diameter, radius, and some really good observation skills out of that. Um, some other things you can do with this, I don't know if you're able to try this or not, but if you make this bubble solution, you can put it in a small child's wading pool, put a little plastic stool or something to stand on in the middle of the pool, drop a hula hoop around the child and dip it down into the soapy substance and you can lift it up carefully and pull a bubble right over and surrounding the entire person. You might want to give that a try. The recipe for this is found at the end of this video, and in fact, at the end of the, the video, I have summarized all of the instructions I've given you. So, good luck. Thank you for following along. I hope you had a good time. Take care.